everybody, this is Matt Shu from Upright Health, and today I am with Cherry. She's gonna be helping you guys learn about palpating the pelvis to help understand what's going on with your hips or with the hips of your clients. So <clears throat> what we're gonna look at is uh, pelvic elevations. So sometimes people call these hip elevations where one side of the pelvis is tilted up a little bit higher than the other side. We're going to look at uh, pelvic anterior tilt and posterior tilt. And we're also going to be looking at um, pelvic rotations, which can be very, 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 very important. Um, and we're also gonna talk briefly about what palpation can and cannot tell you because palpation is not actually a perfect science. And there are some things with palpation and the pelvis um, that actually limit what you'll actually be able to know. All right, so let's get started. <clears throat> like many men, I've put Cherry here up on a pedestal. <laughs> and what we're gonna look at first is, um, is the elevation differences in the pelvis. So hip elevation or pelvic elevation. So when you're looking at elevation differences, you're looking at what the two sides of the pelvis are doing. You're looking at the ilia. So this is one ilium. This is the second ilium, makes two ilia. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your hands and make them like blades here, and you're gonna come in along the top. So this is right in the love handles area. This is this can be kind of ticklish for some people. You're coming straight down, straight in, and then straight down on top of the bone. And then you're checking to see what the level of your hands is. So it can be ticklish, but you know, that's the price you have to pay to find out whether or not the pelvis is level. And so you can see on cherry, that it's pretty level, okay? You don't see any big difference side to side. So in terms of elevations, she's all good. Um, if you see a big difference, Cherry, can you kind of hike this hip up? Okay, if you see something like that, then you know you have something going on, okay? So that's hip elevations, pelvic elevations on one side. Again, you make blades, come in, come down, and then see where your hands are aligned or how far off they are. The next thing we want to look at is anterior tilt and posterior tilt. So a lot of people talk about anterior tilt, posterior tilt. And uh, if you've been to any sort of massage therapy school or manual therapy programs, you may have been taught certain things about um, where to palpate in order to, to determine whether or not a pelvis is anterior or posterior. So <clears throat> in case you haven't, or if you need a refresher, basically what you need to do is you need to find the anterior superior iliac spine. So that's, it's this bony spot that's sort of near the, the, the waistband on a pair of low rise jeans. It's basically if you come into this little groove here at the top of the thigh and you start, you press in and then up, you're gonna hit a bony ridge, right? So you come in and then you come up and you hit this bony ridge that's the anterior superior iliac spine, or the ASIS. The other spot you have to find is on the back, and that's the posterior superior iliac spine. And in order to find that, the easiest way, Cherry, can you turn and face the orange wall? Easiest way to find that is actually to come down on the top of the iliac crest. You come down, 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 down. And what you're doing is as you come down, you're going to scoop up until you find a bony protuberance. So as I'm coming down, I'm bringing the thumb up like this so that I can find the, the spot where the bone, I run into the bottom of the bone. So right, right here on her, it's right, yeah, okay, so it's right here on her. The uh, posterior superior iliac spine on some people can be pretty difficult to find. Some people have really big PSISs some people have tiny ones, so you have to be uh, a little bit um, precise about what you're touching. So now I've found the PSIS and I've found the ASIS. So Cherry, go ahead and turn and face um, this direction again. Okay. So I've got the PSIS here and then I have the ASIS here. I'm at the bottom of both of them. And I'm just checking just like this to see what the level is on front to back. In general, the general rule is if um, the ASIS is just about, um, 
it's just about an inch within about an inch of height like uh, a little bit lower but within an inch you're probably okay okay um, if it's really severe if this is dropped way down can you go into the big tilt so uh, other way good and it's like this big curve in the lower back if you're like that then you probably have something going on not such a good situation and if you go into the other direction where your fingers are where your fingers are basically level then you're also probably looking at a uh, posterior pelvis but there is uh, a little kind of caveat here and I'll talk about that in a second after we go over uh, pelvic rotations so the last thing we're going to look at is pelvic rotations when you're looking for a rotation of the pelvis essentially what you're looking at is whether one side of the pelvis is closer to you than the other side so it's best done from the front so you just get your arms um, just straight out in front of you and your thumbs are ready to find those ASIS's on the pelvis again so you just come in right in front of your uh, your client, your person, your best friend, whoever you're doing this to and you want to be square to them, you get your hands on the ASIS and you want to see whether it feels like one side is this way or one side is this way and you'll notice it because with your elbows straight as you come in you're either going to feel, if, it's, if she's tilted for example, if I come in I'm going to feel that contact with the other hand first and to get the other side I'm going to have to twist or I'm going to have to bend an elbow or something's going to have to happen in order to make contact with both sides. So Cherry, go ahead and relax the way you normally stand. When we're looking at Cherry here, I come in, no problem. It's dead on square. And that's probably because she, uh, she deadlifts and squats and takes care of her body. Okay, so <laughs> no problems here, but again, pelvic rotation come in just like that check to see whether one side is closer to you than the other side so I mentioned that there are some issues with palpation and what you can actually find out about the um, about the pelvis position through palpation one of the major things is well one of the major things that will make it difficult for you to um, trust what you found through palpation and one of the things that should make you kind of think about what you're finding in the context of uh, everything else that you do with the person you're examining um, is that um, the major thing is that bones in the pelvis are not all symmetrical so on one side um, the ilium could be shaped a certain way and the ASIS will have a certain shape and the PSIS will have a certain shape and they will not necessarily match up to each other. So in studies that they've done of cadavers, uh, when they look at the bones of skeletons or of these cadavers, they find that the, the bones just are not shaped the same way. So if you're palpating, you're saying, oh, okay, well, here I'm noticing, you know, the PSIS is here and then the PSIS is here and maybe they're at different heights. That can actually be because the shape of the bones is different and that can also affect if you're looking at tilt you're going oh ASIS is here, PSIS is here and on, on the other side it's very different it may be because the bones themselves are shaped differently so often when you're looking at something like anterior and, pel and, anterior and posterior tilt um, what we're really concerned with usually is what's going on with the lower back so if you have somebody who has a curve in their lower back, so right now Cherry has just a pretty neutral um, lower back curvature. If it's neutral, great. If you didn't find any big difference with the, any big discrepancy with the pelvis and this looks pretty neutral, fine, you're in good shape. But if we have somebody who's really curved back here, has a heavy curve here, and you, you find, okay, the, the pelvis seems like it's an anterior tilt and you look at it and you see this giant curve in the lower back then yeah we can go ahead and call that an anterior tilt you can call that lordosis of the lumbar spine whatever you want to hyperlordosis whatever you want to call it it's definitely an issue because you can literally see that this is not going to be comfortable for this person if we then look for a posterior tilt you know and I said earlier we're looking at whether the ASIS and the PSIS around the same height. 
when that happens, you're gonna see that the lumbar spine is really flat. There's just no curvature here. So you're gonna just see, poop, flat line, no curve, no lordosis. And again, it's not gonna look super comfortable. So you can go ahead and relax. So when you're looking at anterior tilt and pelvic, anterior pelvic tilt and posterior pelvic tilt, a really good clue for you, instead of just palpating, which can be a little bit iffy, is looking at what's happening at the, at the uh, lumbar spine. Um, the other thing to think about uh, that this relates to is if you can turn and face the camera is it's the same issue when you're palpating for the elevation differences. With elevation differences, if the ilium on this side is shaped differently at the crest, it can affect whether you think you have elevation or not. So if, for example, I'm palpating and I go, oh, wow, well, it's, it's a quarter of an inch difference, you may not have yourself an actual elevation difference so much as a bony shape difference. What you can do to verify that is also uh, push into the soft tissue above the ilia and see how the quadratus lumborum feels, see if one side feels more taut, see if one side feels more dense, if one side feels really weak. You can do some movement tests to verify whether there's some sort of muscular difference that's going on there. Um, just Again, just palpating, you can get thrown off if there's just a little difference in the shape of the bone. Um, so you want to make sure the muscles are actually doing something that tells you that there is an elevation difference. In terms of rotations, this tends not to be as big an issue because rotations will be pretty gross. Um, and by gross, I mean obvious, I don't mean disgusting but maybe sometimes disgusting, um, you're going to see that it's really rotated and you'll see that with the, with the legs too. So for example, if I have Cherry rotated here, you're going to see, looking from the front, you can see it in this video right now, you can see that there's a contour difference, the shadowing is different, the flexion on this hip is different. If this one's back here and her feet are in the same spot, then the angle of her hips has to be different on this side relative to this side. So that doesn't come into play as much in terms of the, the, uh, the, the uh, uncertainty you get in palpation. If you palpate for rotation, you're pretty much gonna find the rotation if it's there. Um, and you can go ahead and relax. So always important to remember that palpation is not a 100% tool. It's not a 100% tool even if you have some fancy measuring devices um, to try to measure pelvic um, position. But what you can do is always look at some movement assessments to see if you can verify what you think you're seeing. If you see big, big discrepancies, always check around and look at what's going on to make that happen. With pelvic elevation, if it's a big, big discrepancy, you better investigate. If you see big anterior or posterior tilt, better investigate. But if you're just talking about little differences of a quarter inch to a half an inch, it's probably not really worth your time. All right, so that's it for palpating the pelvis. If you have any questions, get in touch with me through my website or through the comments section on YouTube. Share this video with anybody you know who needs help more precisely touching other people's butts and hips and pelvis and pelvises. And subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Take care.